Okay, so we would like to discuss uh, question uh, three. ABC Company Limited, uh, who manufacture oil goes through to Takra Delimited, an oil company, offering to construct an oil rig for TAS 1 million Ghana cities. The offer was made on a form containing ABC's agreed contract price. On the form containing ABC's agreed contract price might be varied according to the cost and av availability of materials. Takra Delimited replied in a letter containing the standard terms of business uh, stating that they wish to order the rig. These terms did not include a price variation clause but contain a statement that the order was not valid unless confirmed by return post. ABC Limited duly confirmed by a letter dated June 4th, which was delayed in the post as it bore the wrong address and did not arrive until 16th. Meanwhile, on June 12th, Takrada Limited posted a letter to ABC canceling the order, which arrived on 15 June. ABC ignored this letter and pressed on with the construction of the rig. It was completed one year later at the price of uh, 2 million Ghana cities limited. Takrada Limited refuses to take delivery. So the question is, uh, Advice Sakura uh, Limited. So that is the question. And uh, I think, of course, uh, today it's unfortunate that I couldn't uh, uh, sit through my good friend, Mr. Muzu's uh, beautiful presentation because of the internet connectivity issues I had from where I am. But I am very confident that uh, his step-by-step -step, uh, revision uh, across law of contracts uh, certainly enable you to also revise on some of the principles which are pertinent to this uh, particular uh, question. And for that uh, matter, I hope that we'll be able to do justice to this. So as I always tell you, if you have a problem-based question like this, uh, with IRAC, you can never go wrong, isn't it? Uh, or the standard approach is the IRAC. So we are talking about uh, era of law. Era of law uh, plus issues plus uh, relevant as rules or principle, the same thing. Principles, either IRAC or IPAC. Plus your analysis. Application. Plus conclusion. So this is the standard approach for addressing a problem of this kind. And we have to uh, always uh, stick to that. We don't have to try and do something uh, different. Yeah. So as before, can anybody uh, identify the area of law for us? And I've told you that in exams, if you have a problem with this, you have to first, you read, if you read, time, the area of law will definitely uh, strike or will come up uh, your mind and then you, put, and you need to do the issue then you read sentence by sentence that way. So will anybody uh, share with us what the area of law is? Yes. If you want to speak, you can just speak. Uh, we are not many, so we'll just the mic, I think, has not been muted. Uh, if you want to speak, you unmute yourself when you finish, then you mute yourself back. Yes, area of law. You don't want to share? Okay, so, yes. 
And this question is uh, yes. Anybody? Okay, so this question is uh, pretty straightforward. And some of you have been wondering, no. how can you tell? Uh, yes, please mention your name. No. Yes, go ahead. Is it Barton? Emmanuel. Emmanuel, okay, Zaika, okay. Yes. Uh, doc, I think it's uh, the area of law borders on a uh, law of contract with a uh, specific reference to offer and acceptance. Okay. So the area of law, the law of contracts, uh, specifically uh, offer and acceptance. Okay, that is fine. Has anybody got a contrary view? Or if not a contrary view, an alternative, let me put that way. Sometimes it may not be a contrary view, but like an alternative way of going about it. Yeah, you Jane Bano. Okay, uh, Eugene is not okay. Yeah, I think that, uh, yes, as I indicated, ordinarily speaking, you wouldn't have mentioned the law of contract, but because you're writing like a composite paper, and I think that it is very uh, helpful if you did that. And again, some of you also were concerned. How can you tell whether the problem is really about contracts, about thoughts, or about criminal law? You know, most of the problems, when you actually read them, it will be uh, quite uh, obvious uh, what the, the, the bigger area is. So this one, certainly, you don't need to uh, be an Einstein type of a person to know that there's a law of contract. It's quite obvious, good. So our friend has told us that the area is law of contract, particularly offering acceptance or agreement or formation of a contract, that is fine. Good, now we have to come to, all this will be in the introduction, now we come to issues. What are the issues? The issues, I said that we have to move sentence by sentence. So uh, if you, let's take the first sentence. ABC, who manufacturer group to Yeah, please, right, Mr. yourself. Uh, all the time, when you're in uh, this type of uh, mute yourself, you want to talk, then you mute yourself. Otherwise, we get the feedback from your end. Thank you very much. Good. So the first sentence, ABC, who manufacture oil goods, route to Takura Limited, an oil company, offering to construct an oil rig for one million. And we ask ourselves, does this particular statement raise any issue having regard to the area of law that we have identified. Does it? Does it provoke any issue? Does it provoke any issue? The first sentence. No. No, sir. Are you sure, Fatima? Why, why no? What am I why no? Um, because the first statement only talks about the fact that what the company does, that one company and wrote another company offering to construct a record at a certain price. So I don't think that's an issue there. Uh, do you agree with Fatima because uh, having regard to I have a, I have yes anybody well I wouldn't say that there's no issue because uh, uh, perhaps, yeah. Doc. Emmanuel perhaps the first you are referring to the first sentence right yes perhaps that would look more like uh, an invitation to treat Mm. Because they are they have written to you um ABC 
Road to Takradi, um, Oil Limited, offering to construct an oil rig for this. They are offering, so maybe then, um, they, this is what they have, they've, they've written to inform you about. So maybe then it's now left with the Takradi oil to make a proposal to them. That's how I see it, though, but... No, but you see, because we identified the areas like offer and acceptance or agreement, don't you think that it will be useful to us uh, whether the... Uh, I mean, whether the letter by uh, ABC constitutes an offer. It's an important, whether it constitutes an offer. Or, okay, Doc, is it, or, I it whether it's an to, Sorry? Doc, so are we dealing with the whole story, uh, scenario or just the first? No, that, but we are moving. I said that in order not to get any issue to get lost on you, it is advisable that uh, you move sentence by sentence. It doesn't mean that every sentence you are going to raise an issue, but a good strategy is that, like the first one, I'll raise an issue, but that may not be like the final list of issues. When you have finished, uh, up to, like if, when, you, when you go to the last sentence, then you come back to the list of issues that you have. Some of them can be merged or some uh, may appear to be repetitive and things like that. But at least it is better to flag it than to miss it, okay? So we need to, yes, they've written to them, offering to construct an oil. We need to ask ourselves, uh, does the, the letter, like the, uh, does the letter concerning the construction, like the, 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 the uh, does it, amount to, does it amount to an offer? Is it an offer? We don't have to take it for granted because we need to establish whether an offer exists or if it's not an offer, it's invitation to treat or what. So that is important. So we don't have to take it for granted. Even if it is obvious, you still need to flag it. You state the principle and then you dismiss it that uh, due to this and this and this and that. It needs not detain our attention here because the essential element of offer, being finality, being definitiveness and all that and so on is there. So I think that uh, we could uh, flag uh, the first sentence as giving us one issue. Okay, so let's move on. Two, the offer was made on the form containing uh, ABC's agreed contract price. I think there's a, you know, I don't know, whoever typed the question, I think something is missing, but at least the sense is there. The offer was made on a form containing ABC's agreed contract price, uh, which I think maybe, which might be varied according to the cost and availability of uh, materials. Okay, full stop. And there's a full stop somewhere there. Good. So does that uh, provoke an issue? Or for now, it does not. I'm talking about this. Does this provoke an issue? Yes or no? Let's hurry up. Does it provoke an issue? Lena. No sure. Okay, so uh but of course, but we see something about like the the form, right? Taking your minds to uh, the situation in the Butler Machine 2 against SLO Corporation. Remember that? But then we come back to it. So, Takra Tacla, Limited replied in a letter containing their standard terms of business, stating that they wish to order the rig. Does that provoke an issue? 
Yeah, so certainly, whether the uh, letter by, whether Takura, this uh, uh, letter on their standard forms amount to acceptance, right? Whether it amounts to acceptance or constitute an acceptance. These terms did not include a price variation clause, but contain a statement that the order was not valid unless confirmed by a return post. Does that suggest any issue? Does that suggest any issue? Does that suggest any issue? Are we communicating? You are sleeping. Uh, are you with me? Yes, we are with you. We are with you. Yeah, so the next, uh, that sentence, does it raise any issue in your mind? I am on this sentence uh, where I have just that uh, this one. Yeah, the blue color. Does it raise any issue? So I think it raises the issue of um, terms of a contract. Terms of a contract. Uh, these terms did not include the price variation clause, but contain a statement that the order was not valid unless confirmed by return post. Uh, I wouldn't, if you say terms of contracts, uh, it's too general, isn't it? Is it you know, you, if it, with respect to terms of contract, if you need to raise any issue at all, there'll be need for some specificity, so, you know, you need to have some particularity, isn't it? So I think that is not exactly in my view, but there's something there. There's an important issue there, which you should Doc, tell me. There's an important issue in the blue that I have highlighted. You have to tell me. Doc, does it raise the issue of the poster rule? Yes, so you have to uh, uh, frame it well. Um, so how will you frame it? I mean, of course, you have the idea, but I want it to be properly framed. So how will you frame it? How will you frame it? I mean, what you've said is true, but I want it to be framed like the properly. Yes. that the, uh, it contained a statement that the order was not valid unless confirmed by return post. So isn't it simply like, no. yes, yes. So it was, uh, it's a counter offer. Well, like if you say counter offer, if you say it just simple like that, I don't really get it unless you want to frame it well so that I will know what you are trying to say. Okay. And offer from who? The, I don't know if you get my point. But if we say simply can't offer, I haven't said anything specifically, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. The day I think. Um, we can see whether the, the letter by Takrade constituted a counter offer. Okay. Whether the letter oh, there is a counter offer. Uh, but I think if we remember, okay, we have already raised an issue as whether the letter by Takrade Limited 
constitute an acceptance or I think we've raised an issue like that, haven't we? Yes, yes. Yeah, so if you've raised an issue like that, fine. Okay, no, of course, as I said, don't worry. Uh, if you're all talking about candor, but let's put it down. Uh, somebody should be listing the issues for us, okay? So we have the uh, three issues now. Somebody should be listing them for us. When we finish, we quickly go through them and then we make them and then we... Good. But uh, there is another thing. So can I try? Yes, Fatima. Whether or not the offer of the order would be valid if the response does not come back by return post. Okay, so, okay, that is fine. So whether the, so maybe you could, for example, say assuming, right? Assuming, Sacrament Limited's letter constitute an offer. Whether it had disabled or it had disabled the postal rule. We are not saying that it's an offer yet, but you know, sometimes the, the issue can also be conditional. So assuming, or if Takrade Limited's letter is an offer, has it excluded the postal rule. In other words, has the offer stated that it does not want the postal rule to apply with respect to acceptance, okay? Okay, now, so, so, so somebody should capture, then move on. ABC duly confirmed by a letter dated June 4th, which was delayed in the post, as it bore the wrong address and did not arrive until June 16. Does it raise any issue? Does it raise any issue? It does. What issue is that? What issue is that? Whether or not the letter bearing the wrong address repudiates the contract or the offer. Mm -hmm. Emma, Emma, let me send you a link. Emma. Or treaty uh, offer. Not. Or treaty offer. Uh, Zoom. Uh, uh, no, not it. Uh, um, not, as, not exactly. Not exactly. Not exactly. Not exactly. Why should be that soon or treaty? Answer uh, question. Uh, please, uh, please, in case you are something, in case you are for please, mute yourself. Okay. Please mute yourself. Thank you. You don't need to wake people up, let them sleep. It's not, uh, you've had enough uh, le uh, lessons today from Sir Dennis to Mr. Muzu. So I am not sleeping and I'm online and I thought I should do something. So if you are here, we do something. So don't worry those who are sleeping, okay? Thank you. So ABC duly confirmed by a letter dated June 4th, which was delayed in the post, as it bore the wrong address and did not arrive until June 16. Somebody mentioned uh, what that repudiation was something. I didn't get it well. Can you repeat yourself, please? No. Yes. Yes. You see, I think with the postal rule, once you use the wrong address, um, the postal rule does not apply. You will get there. So, so is that your issue? Well, I think I think there can be an issue. An issue can come out of that because that is a very um it's a very um salient point there. Once they mentioned that a wrong address was used. You see the postal rule, as it is stated in uh, Adam Selinsley, I think um 
No, I'm not talking about is it, we are not talking about now. You have started addressing the like doing the the discussion. At this stage, we are trying to identify the issue. We come there. So we are pounding the, the fufu. Don't, don't, don't start drinking the, the soup, so to speak. Thank you. Okay. All right. But look, I think okay. in a matter of fact, I think the issue, there should be an issue with the wrong address. Uh, because, because we have raised... Uh, okay, so instead of... Uh, instead of put, yeah, I mean, I know what we are talking about, but let's put it. Okay, let's listen to Kweku. Maybe Kweku may want to put it uh, the way that we are thinking. Kweku, go ahead. Okay, Doc. Um, I'm thinking that um, the issue should revolve around whether or not ABC's response dated 4th June. Um, no, whether or not um, Takwadi uh, Limited's response to ABC. Uh, dated 4th June amounts to an effective communication of uh, 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 acceptance. Okay. So, uh, okay, fine. I get uh, what you mean. So, you want to raise an issue I do, whether ABC's letter, right? Whether ABC's, uh, you can just simply say whether ABC's uh, letter dated uh, June 4th. Uh, constitute uh, valid uh, acceptance, valid acceptance of uh, Takra Delimited uh, offer, then you can put that offer in inverted commerce. The reason why I'm saying you put in inverted commerce is that we haven't concluded whether Takra Delimited's uh, letter is an offer properly so called is uh, something that we still need to resolve and that is why if you are going to say that whether abc is a letter dated june 4th uh, constitute an acceptance of takra delimiters uh, uh, offer we put the takra delimiters uh, offer we put that offer in the inverted commerce inverted commerce in the sense that uh, is not established Okay, it's not established that the tax order limited letter is an offer. It's something that we need to resolve, and that is why I'm putting it in better comments as is well. Kaku, please, is your hand still up or the previous one? Kaku? Okay. Prof, is the previous one. All right, okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so let's uh, move on. Meanwhile, on June 12th, Takra Limited posted a letter to ABC counseling. I hope somebody is taking down the issues for us. And there are a lot of interest. It's a simple scenario, but it's very interesting, isn't it? And I would like, if I'm an examining student, I would like to give this kind of thing because it appears simple, but it tests your knowledge and appreciation of a lot of elementary principles. Meanwhile, on June 12th, Takra Limited posted a letter to ABC canceling the order, which arrived on 15 June. Any issue on that, BJ? Any issue? Yeah, I agree with that. Yes, morning. Yes. Um, Doc, my issue is uh, whether or not the letter posted on the 12th June by Takra Limited equates to a proper revocation. Okay, fine. So whether uh, Takra this limited uh, June 4th letter uh, amounts to revocation. Amounts revocation uh, of its uh, purported offer, right? Or yeah, purported offer or amounts, yeah, okay, that is fine. Amounts revocation of its offer. Then the offer in inverted commerce again, because as I said, we are here to establish or confirm whether as a matter of uh, facts and law, the letter by Tax Credit Limited is really an offer or not. Good. So let's move on. I think the last, uh, but one letter, se sentence. 
ABC ignored this letter and press on with the construction of the rig. Uh, does it raise any issue to your mind? Okay, BJ again. BJ is on fire this morning. Yes, dog. <laughs> In that part, um, new one too, Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, the issue here is whether or not ABC company can enforce the contract since the con construction has taken place. Mm. Whether or not ABC company can enforce the contract since the construction has taken place. Okay. Oh, okay, okay, I see what you mean. Okay, um, any, any other person? Okay, maybe let's take that sentence together with the, the last sentence, then we will uh, uh, tie the two together. It was completed one year later. At the price of two million, uh, sorry, two, uh, two million uh, Ghana cities. Type of limited refuses to take uh, delivery. Okay, so if you put these two sentences together, then it will reinforce the issue that uh, uh, BJ uh, raised. So, um, whether, yes, you can put a number of ways, whether there's a binding uh, uh, contract. Uh, between ABC and Takwadi Limited regarding the, the construction of the rig, of course, the whole thing about construction of the rig, so that is fine. And then all the time, I would suggest actually, if I am marking law of contract examination, I'm always interested in remedies, right? So don't, don't just think that it's about offering acceptance. So remedies is not important, right? Because um, you also see, uh, because uh, we are told it was completed one year later at the stated price, but the other party, Takaway Limited, is refusing to take delivery. Refusing to accept that what has been made, isn't it? So uh, we have to raise an issue regarding remedy. Whether uh, ABC is entitled to uh, any remedy for Takrade, Takrade Limited's uh, refusal to take delivery. So we should have an issue on that. Okay, so uh, if anybody did the nose taking, how many issues do we have so far? How many issues do we have? Uh, did anybody take the, some of the issues down for us? Hello? Uh, please, did anybody? I think yeah. we have like Eight issues. Eight issues. Okay. Right. Can you take us through yeah. that? Can you take us through so that uh, we can? Uh, okay. So let let me let me yes let me be writing them here. Okay. So you said that the so assuming this is like uh, exams, uh, the area of law. Presented by, I mean, you can put in so many ways. Presented by the given uh, scenario. It's law of contracts. Acceptance. as well as uh, remedies for breach of contract. Following, right. 
for simplicity. You can just do a number of them, right? You can just do colon like this. You know, just do one. Okay, so what is the first one? Okay, um, if I got it right, whether the letter whether, written by... Whether the letter written by... Go ahead. ABC company to Takade. Okay. Offering to construct an oil rig for one million. Now that letter has it got a date? Has it got a date? Uh, I didn't. I don't have the fact. Okay, yet. so um, what are the letter uh, written by ABC? Uh, let's see, written by ABC. Okay, offering. Okay, so you can even sometimes you can even uh, quote it this way. Yes, that one doesn't have the date. Offering to construct the oil rig. Okay, so you can quote it like this. So order the letter written by ABC, right? And you can offering to construct and because you've quoted, you can even use the quotation marks because you've uh, quoted from the question. Constitutes or amount to an offer. Would a valid you? offer. Okay, constitute a valid offer. Okay. Uh, what next? Next. Whether the letter. Under the letter yes go ahead you didn't put it down the day a valid i i'm sure i didn't get the date uh, yeah any but uh anybody whether the letter which letter um uh, so it this fact say that the letter was on their standard uh, at um, if, uh who put down the issues so i wrote something down i don't know whether it's the right thing i wrote that assuming um limited letter constituted an offer whether it has disabled possible Oh, okay. Okay, so assuming or assuming or if the same thing, right? If that's okay. If Akra, this Akra Delimited, right? Akra Delimited. Uh, Letter. Has it got a date? Was there a date? Sometimes a date. No. Okay, no date. Okay. If that uh, this limited letter amounts to an offer. Order. It's disabled. Disabled or excluded, the same thing, right? Whether it is applied or disabled or dis excluded, you can put in various ways. Disabled the postal rule. Seconds. I think that we, I think we raised um, an issue on whether there was a valid acceptance and even an issue on whether there was a counter offer. You mean after you this one it. or before this? Before this one. Well, that which one was the? Uh... What that which one the was? Letter it? by Takade. Okay. Yes. Whether it constituted a valid acceptance. Whether. Okay. This. Whether Takade is. Uh... Limited letter constitutes or it's a valid acceptance. Same thing. That letter is a valid acceptance. 
Acceptance. Okay. Uh, okay, then we wrote the whether the Sacrades letter evented the post zero. I think that's what you captured yeah. in the third one. And what else? What else? I think there are other issues we raised. Oh, yes. Down. Um, yeah, button. Um, Doc, let me read yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. Um, there was another issue I think we raised. Um, whether or not ABC could enforce the contracts against Sacrady Limited. Uh, and that should be like the la getting to the latter part. Yes, we raised part, one, yeah. we raised some before. And some other issues. Whether, yeah. Yes, whether ABC's letter dated June 4th constituted a valid acceptance to Takrade's presumed offer okay. or purported offer. Letter dated uh, June 4th. For, yeah, June 4th. Okay. Amongst what? A valid, a valid what? acceptance to Takrade. Okay. A valid acceptance to Takrade's purported offer. Okay. Okay. Uh, what else? Are we done? I think there were. Uh, there was something about revocation, too, isn't it? What issue was that? Yeah. Then we had an issue like that. Yeah, someone really bad. I didn't. The line was bad. I didn't. <laughs> Yes, no. Um, it was on uh, whether or not the letter posted on the 12th June. Okay. By Takradi Limited amounts to a proper revocation. Whether or not the letter posted on the 12th June by Takradi Limited amounts to a proper revocation. Okay. Uh, okay. No, I think early, earlier there was a suggestion by someone that um, whether or not the letter replied by Takra Limited amounts to a counter offer earlier, but I don't know whether you took. Uh, the that the, the letter by Otakura Daily is that is it the same letter or another letter? Um, that was the, the earlier. If maybe you could get back to the facts, yeah. Uh, I think the the Takura letter replied, uh, continue the sentence and yes, order. Oh, okay, so we haven't we haven't formulated an issue around that. Eh? I think we said that whether Takura yes. uh, limited letter is a valid acceptance, so if you want to. If you don't want to forget and you still, so you can you could say that uh, valid acceptance to counter offer, right? Okay. It's possible, it's possible to do that way. But it, it's in relation to the same a sentence, right? All right, Doc. Uh, so, uh, yeah, all that accurate this letter puts on 12 grammars, effective revocation. That's the revocation of what? Of whose offer? Of ABC's uh, offer? No, of its uh, of 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 of, uh, of its uh, purported offer, right? Or its offer, in, or you can put that in the quotation mark. As I said, but we need to establish that. Okay, then somebody asked the I think the last but one issue. Oh, uh, what the more is it? When whether or not ABC is entitled to any remedy for Chakradi refusing to take delivery. Okay. I think there was whether there is a binding contract between ABC and Chakradi before you went to the remedy. Okay. You mentioned that. Oh, okay. But I, okay, fine. Let's put it down. You made some of them. It's binding. 
ABC and Takwadi. Okay. It's entitled to a new remedy for Takwadi's visa. To accept the leave. Okay, so you see, we have about seven issues. Now, we, if we have all these things, we can quickly look at them. Some of them are related. They can either be merged, or when you are discussing, they can be treated together as I indicated. So let's start. Whether or not, whether the letter written may be offering to construct is a valid offer. Okay, I mean, this is an issue it can stand on its own, isn't it? It can stand on its own. Uh, two, uh, two and uh, three, right? You mean two, three, four? They are all related. Two, three, four. They are related, isn't it? They are all talking about acceptance. And as we indicated and in you also had acceptance, only talk about acceptance, there are two things which you must always have in mind. What do you call like the fact of acceptance and then communication of acceptance. So the fact of acceptance refers to like the unqualified endorsement to approval. And then the communication as to whether you have made the offer all away. So if you look at Issues three, no, sorry, starting from issue two, uh, four, I'm sorry, three and four, you, you notice that they all relate to acceptance. Or do you see it differently from how I'm seeing it? As Jami? Do you see it differently? I think you want to talk. Yeah. Hello, Doc. Yes, DJ. Yes, sir. I think uh, I agree with you. Maybe during the application, we could right. discuss them sure. all together. Good. Yeah. So let's say that uh, you have you have all these, but uh, you can. Okay, you have all these. All so two, three, four can be treated together. Now let's come back to uh, five. Uh, five, uh, five can be on this one, isn't it? And then uh, we can treat, uh, can we can treat uh, six and seven also uh, together as it were. So if you look at it, you are going to have like uh, I think three uh, areas. So you have this, all this, like all this, you have all this as your introduction, right? And so you, in your write-up, like as part of your introduction, you can say that you can write, uh, I mean, some of the, the issues related, I raised are very uh, related. And for that matter, issue one will be treated alone. Issues two, three, and four will be discussed together. Uh, issue five will be discussed uh, alone, and then issue six and seven will be discussed together. So all this will constitute your introduction. You are done, right? So you come to do the treatment. You take this, as I said, for proper layout, I will recommend or I will prefer that. So you have your uh, issue one, right? One of two ways. Either you make it like you know cap locks, like capital, so that it will become like the, the heading, right? Or you can let it be uh, there's a small uh, as there's a small letter, but then you underline, right? You underline so that we know that uh, uh, this is what you are discussing. And as we have uh, indicated. You have to tell us so under this, you state the principle. 
So you look at the issue, uh, it's quite straightforward. It's about a valid offer. So you have to state the principles, the rules. You make the point that uh, you define, it will essentially mean defining an offer, isn't it? Expression of willingness on the part of the offer or the promisor uh, to enter into contract on the stated terms, if same accepted by the offeree. Uh, to be a valid offer, it must contains finality, meaning that there is no room for further negotiation. Because if the element of finality is lacking, it will not be an offer. That will be an invitation word to treat. And then you cite the authority, so many of them. NTAC versus Century, uh, Manchester and Gibson, um, no, Carlin, Kabbalist, Smoke and so on, you cite them. And you are done with the statement of the law. So you leave you, you a paragraph, not leaving a line, just leave a paragraph. So in the instant case, so you are going to apply the principles, the facts. So what you have told us, uh, no, sorry, in stating the law, uh, because we want to show off a bit of knowledge, because we said that if there is a, a element of, uh, if, if the element of finality is lacking, that limitation to treat, you can just quickly tell us, just in a brief, that uh, invitation to treat uh, does not constitute an offer. It rather uh, is calling upon the, the invitee the pay, to make an offer, which may be accepted or rejected. And with that matter, in a number of situations, uh, advertisement in the nature of potential bilateral contract, as in the case of Patrick and, and, and Crichton, then uh, display of goods in the window of a shop or in a self-service you know, from Azika Society of Great Britain, Fisher and Bell, uh, the courts have held that these are invitation to treat. So you finish, you finish stating like the principles, right, related to issue one. Then you come to do the application. In the instant case, or in the present case, what is the, I mean, we are going to find out, is the element of finality there? If the element of finality is there, then we can conclude that that is what is an offer. So let's look at this. Offering to construct an oil rig for 1 million Ghana cities. Uh, do we see finality on the part of ABC? So that from the point of view of ABC, can we say that uh, they are quite resolute that if the Takura Limited would accept the 1 million, then they are ready to be in business on that particular attempts, construct the rig and take 1 million. Do we see that? Do we see that? Anybody? Hello? Hi, sir. Yes, do we, uh, do we see that? We could kindly go back today. The, yeah, it's over there, the problem. You mean the, the, the problem? So we've stated the principle. All, all that we are trying to do is to apply the principle to resolve that uh, first issue. And I'm saying that what is essential for us is to find out whether there is that element of finality. Um, Um, I think there is. <laughs> there is. Okay, then explain. There's, um, ABC intends to be bound by the statement. There is consideration. That's the amount, the one million they stated. Um, yes, there's certainty in the words that they used. I don't see any ambiguity or... Okay, there's yeah. no bigness, nothing there. Okay. Okay, so. Sir, sir. Yes. sorry, Did but uh, you, the next statement, in whilst we are answering this one, it's like it states that the their prices might be varied according to the cost and availability of 
materials. So it appears the their offer is not definite or final. Okay, so I, I am. Okay, so you are statement. trying to say that uh, you are trying to say that if there's a, a price variation clause, then we yes. don't have final finally. But if you remember the case of Butler Machine Tools, right, against SLO Corporation Limited, if you remember that case, remember that case. Do you remember Butler Machine Tools? I have so not read it. Sir. No, but it's a very important case. Everybody should read it because. Uh, that, uh, the facts of Butler machine tools are what have been used, adapted to form this question, if you know that case. Okay. Where okay. you had like two companies, right? Each of them had their own standard forms or what they call their requisition form. If they want to uh, uh, procure or order, buy anything, they have their own forms they will use. And then they'll just bring it to you and then you sign. And then they'll take like the tea off. And one of them, one of the companies had a, a price variation clause on their form. And the other okay. did not have a price variation clause on its form. So mm -hmm. they use the two, right? You sign, I also sign on yours. But one of the company had a price variation clause and the other did not have it on the standard form. So later on, there was a dispute as to uh, whether the contract had been made on whose terms. Is it? Uh, can we say that the terms of the contract are referable to uh, Butler Machine or SLO? Because one of them had the price variation clause and the other did not have the price variation clause. And so that was, yeah, so that case uh, uh, is, is, is very interesting and you have to look at it. But if you haven't read that, uh, doing this particular question, you can do it all right, but it will not be rich in the, analysis of the law okay thank you very much sir right good so um in the light of that case we cannot just say that if you have a price variation clause a clause which says that yes uh, this price could vary in future and it's a construction uh, project isn't it so construction project is it just is it, it, similar to what we call inflationary clause, right? Price variation is equivalent of inflationary clause. You can have inflationary clause in some of these uh, construction or big procurement and say that depending upon movement in price, we can change or adjust the price to reflect the inflation or to reflect currency change uh, as it were. So I think that uh, that per se, is not enough for us to say that there's no finality in the proposal by ABC. Yeah, so that is not enough. So we could still uh, say, because like varied according to cost and availability of materials, I think it just, uh, it, it has the equivalent effect of uh, inflation or what you call the price variation, isn't it? Yeah, so that, uh, does not uh, deprive ABC's pro pro proposal of uh, uh, finality. Yeah. So let's move on. So let's assume that uh, we concluded that based upon the analysis that we have done and all that there's an element of finality and all that. So the letter by uh, ABC is an offer. And of course, we know that uh, an offer should also be made known to the intended uh, offer, isn't it? And that one is satisfied here. The rule to Takura Limited, so presumably, Takura Limited is in known or has received the letter, so they know about it. And then there's a finality, so that is an offer. Okay, let's move on to the next issue. Uh, the next issue is the whether Takura this letter is. So when we said we are doing the, these uh, three together, that's what we, we said. So it should- Yeah, so the, the next issue will be on acceptance. Okay, so two, three, General. four, good. So now we have to state or uh, outline the principles. Can somebody outline the principles for us? Okay. And then you'll be lazing them with the authorities, All right? Yeah, uh, school flow. Nobody's time. One person should uh, attempt it for us. Alam, 
I say old person. Hey, baby. Hey. Hey. Uh, please, if you are not talking, mute, uh, mute yourself. Oh, no. Your you conversation in your house is coming to the class. It's no good. Oh, yes. no. Oh, let's try it. Try the principle. Oh, for yeah. No, 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 no. Okay. Yes, they did. Um, okay. Um, let me state it first. Um, we can say that acceptance is validly made if there's intention to be bound by the words. The words are final and unqualified. The words used by the one accepting the final and unqualified. Okay. You done. Please state the principles in full. Yes, what you, you said is good. An acceptance refers to unqualified or unconditional approval of the proposal contained in the offer. That is to say that the offeree has unequivocally embraced what is contained in the offer. On the other hand, where there's a qualification or where there's a condition, that will not be a valid acceptance, but that will be a counter offer. As in the case of hide and wrench, and the counter offer has the legal effect of destroying the original word offer, so that will no longer be available for acceptance. No, they be in CI and all those type of uh, Thank cases. You. Uh -huh. So you do that. Okay. Now, now you. when you are done on all that, then you move on. You, you are still not done yet. You tell us that an acceptance uh, must be communicated before same would be what effective. Where acceptance is not communicated, it's not effective. That is a general position of the law. Then you have to say like the authorities, isn't it? You have to say those authorities, the acceptance must be communicated, a number of authorities, uh, household fire insurance against grant, uh, Rutle, even Rutledge and grant themselves and all those cases, uh, you, you cite them. And then, and of course, and then the, uh, this the Fufi and Zano, they've been in all those cases, they are very supportive. And you also go on to, I make uh, the point that co as communication of acceptance may be governed by the postal rule, uh, which according to Adams and Lindsay, uh, is to the effect that where the letter containing the acceptance has properly been uh, addressed or assisted in the usual way. Acceptance is deemed to have taken place, right? From the moment that it is posted, and does not matter, even if uh, it should get lost and it doesn't get to the the, the overall asset where. Uh, and then you go on to say that, on the other hand, uh, where the mode of uh, communication is instantaneous, as in enters again my fire operation, then the postal rule does not work, does not apply, and. Uh, the offeror will actually have to uh, hear or receive the acceptance before same will be considered effective. Again, it is uh, permissible in law for the offeror to make an election or to choose or make a preference that he does not want postal rule to apply and that will not be applicable. I think as in the case of, uh, 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 the, the case of, uh, just remind me, is it how well, uh, Secretis, uh, I think against uh, Hughes? Yes, uh, that you can uh, say that you want the acceptance to reach you in writing, as happened in that case. And the court said that because uh, the emphasis has been that acceptance or uh, should reach them in writing, what that meant was that the postal rule had been exempted or excluded or disabled. So that was not applicable. Yeah, so uh, I think that uh, we have stated the 
principles which are relevant as far as issues two, three, and four are concerned. Now we come to do the application, the analysis and the application. Who would do that for us? Who do the analysis and the application for us? As far as issues two, three, and four are concerned, Anybody? When I say you should talk, I take advantage and talk because when you talk, you don't know. When you talk, it's another way of learning, right? When you talk, it's another way of learning. If uh, what you are saying is wrong, we co correct you. If, when, if it is correct, we reinforce what you know. Then you're moving on. So who do the application for us? Who do the application for us? Anybody? Are you there? Yeah, we're here. Yes. Who do the application for us? I've told you the principles, the rules. So what are you supposed to use to apply them to answer each of the issues, isn't it? Each of the three issues. Is it difficult? Or are you still not clear? Um, so. Yes. I will attempt it in this way. Yes. Um, from the fact the offer by Takradi Limited prescribed that acceptance should be by postal rule. But uh, ABC, ABC attempted by using the postal rule, but they got the address wrong. And since the, the law is that the address must be correct before acceptance becomes valid, I think I suggest that there was no valid acceptance in this matter. Okay, BJ, I mean, you've made an effort, but I think that, uh, you know, we say that uh, we learn to crawl before we walk, isn't it? Yes. You have decided yes, to walk instead of crawling first. Now, you jumped the gun. I said that when you're talking about acceptance, the first one, the fact of acceptance, can we see that there has been unqualified approval, unqualified assent or endorsement to the proposal containing the offer? So that is the first one. Before you move on to the second level, if there has been unqualified approval or endorsement of the proposal, uh, has it been made known to the offeror? Has it been communicated? So you have told us about the second one, the communication bit, but we, have, we haven't established whether the fact of acceptance is even there, isn't it? I'm talking about like issue two, because you two are talking about whether that or this letter is a valid acceptance. So that needs to be addressed before you move on to the, uh, the three, so that the logical appreciation of your response will be quite evident, okay? Yeah, so BJ, can you try that way? All right, sir. Oh, I've not convinced you. Yeah. <laughs> I'll convince you. Uh, sir, I, I'm going to, I'm trying to go through the facts and then. Mm -hmm. So as I said, all the time, remember the, the steps from one before you go to two. If you're talking about acceptance, we must first ask ourselves, can we see that the intended of a re made an unqualified, that is unconditional approval, right? Or endorsement of the proposal contained in the, in the offer. 
If the answer is yes, then uh, that is the uh, half of acceptance has been taken care of. And it's not complete. There must be communication bit before you go on to find out whether that uh, unconditional approval has been made known to the offeror. Okay, Doug. Yes. I think Zachary's letter to them, the fact is that it contained their standard terms. So um, if I'm getting the facts well, it's like they also had certain terms they stated in their um, letter to ABC. So um, there was kind of, um, it wasn't a complete acceptance of what ABC had offered. Okay. If I'm getting the facts right. So uh, when we were stating the principle, to you want to add the principle of what they call the cross of isn't it? Uh, Tin uh, and Hoffman, you remember Tin and Hoffman? Remember that cross office, cross office. So are, then which would be a counter of? Are two identical office. No, please, I don't get you. Sorry. Sorry. Network. The network, eh? okay. I was saying that. Please, you are saying something, yes. Yes, yeah. I was saying that uh, when we're stating the principles, we should have also remembered uh, the principle relating to cross office, right? And cross office refers to two identical office. I have offered something to you, and you've also offered the same thing back to you. But the two offers cross in the post, in the sense that uh, at the time okay. that mine was sent, you had also sent yours. So I received yours, you also received okay. mine. So who has accepted? Oh, okay. That? So that's what they call the cross office. In the case is uh, Tin and Hoffman. Of course, I mean that. So is, it's not like no, no. That's not what we have here. So they... That is not what we have here. But at least oh. it's it needs to be stated as part of the prince because it's, it's relevant, isn't it? Good. So yeah. If you look at uh, as you 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 rightly uh, you know drew attention to that bit of the fact. The fact that uh, Takra Day Limited replied using their standard uh, terms, <laughs> stating they wish to order the rig. Now, what we need to find out is that if their standard terms, right, are different from what ABC company proposed, then that will not be unconditional endorsement of ABC's offer. And that would rather be a counter offer. So if, because we are told that uh, they reply on, you know, containing the standard terms of business, stating that they wish to order the rig. And so if their standard terms are not the same as the proposal contained in ABC, then what that means is that the letter by Takra, the purporting to accept ABC so far, will not be an acceptance. That will be a counter offer. As in hide and what? Hide and wrench. So that is one point we should make. And then we have to also move on with the other sentence. These terms did not include the price variation clause, but contain a statement that the order was not valid unless confirmed by what? by return post. Again, we see more, I mean, that's why the fact that we don't know uh, the other things, uh, supposedly their standard terms of business. At least the bit we have been told that uh, their, stand, their terms uh, contain a statement that the order was not valid unless confirmed by uh, return uh, of post, it's also drawing attention to something. So if you put all that together, you will notice that Takrade's letter cannot be considered as a, an acceptance of ABC's offer. Rather, it's a counter offer. And the counter offer, what is the legal effect? The legal effect of a counter offer is to, is to, uh, 
is to destroy the original offer so that the original offer raw may now turn himself, if he's so interested, into the new offeree. And then the original intended offeree will now become like the offer raw in respect of the counter offer that he has made. So right now, Takwa the limited as it were, they've made a counter offer. And it behoves ABC to either accept or reject. That is, uh, if you want to look at it from that angle. So we cannot really uh, treat uh, Takrade as having accepted ABC's uh, offer because there's uh, evidence of counter offer. Okay, if that is so, uh, Takrade's letter is an offer. Now that offer, has it uh, disabled or has it excluded the application of the postal rule of vote acceptance? Because that will give tell into discussion of issue number what? Four, issue number four, as whether ABC's uh, letter dated uh, 4th June amounts valid acceptance to Takra this purported offer. So right now, uh, having concluded that Takra this letter uh, did not amount to acceptance of ABC's uh, original offer, but rather a counter offer. That presupposes that we have established uh, Takra this uh, letter as an offer. So it's no longer a purported offer. So if it's an offer, has it been accepted by ABC? Because ABC by 4th uh, June, uh, they are 4th June uh, letter, right? So we are told that ABC duly confirmed by letter dated June 4th, which was delayed in the post as it bore the wrong address and did not, yeah. So confirmed. Confirmed means that we can interpret the confirmed as meaning an endorsement, an unqualified, uh, unqualified approval to the terms or the proposal contained in uh, Takra Delimited's offer. Because if ABC in their letter have not uh, unequivocally, unconditionally approved what was contained in Takra Delimiter's uh, offer, the statement will not have said that ABC duly confirmed, right? Duly confirmed. Uh, so duly confirmed means that yes, they have agreed with the proposal, isn't it? And if if agreed with the proposal, that is an acceptance. But then let's look at the communication bit as to whether ABC effectively communicated the acceptance. Now, if you look at the Takra Delimiter's letter, we get evidence that uh, they have disabled or deactivated or disapplied the postal rule, isn't it? Because they said that the order was not valid unless confirmed by return post. Unless confirmed by return post. Uh, if you say confirmed by return post, have you actually disabled the postal rule? Certainly not. Because by or will you say that return post means that uh, they are saying that uh, it must actually reach them. By return post, yes, Jamie. Jamie, you want to? Um, yes. Yeah. So, in my view, I believe the return post means that um, if ABC confirms the order from Sakradi, they would have to send their response or acceptance via post. That's enabling the postal to be applicable. Yes. Right. So, okay. So, in that case, uh, the postal rule has not been disabled. 
is applicable because by return post, so Adams and Lenser, okay, that is fine. Okay, that is good. Uh, so uh, if the postal oh. rule is applicable, and let's examine the fact, when was the posting made? The letter was dated June 4th. And then we are told that it was delayed in it. So what are the requirements of the postal rule that it should be properly be addressed you satisfy all the requirements or formalities of posting in that particular area. So if the letter was wrongly addressed, the postal rule cannot apply because the conditions necessary for application of the postal rule have not been met. So it's not enough that they said that you are, you know, it should be by return of post. And for that matter, automatically the postal rule is applicable. No you must satisfy the conditions for applicability of the postal rule. And from the facts, we are told that it bore wrong address. So since it bore wrong address, then the postal rule did not apply. So therefore, it arrived uh, June 16. So June 16 will become the effective date of communication of acceptance and not uh, June 12th. Sorry, sorry, not June uh, 4th, right? If the letter had properly been addressed and had been posted in the usual way, then the basic conditions for the postal rule have been satisfied. In which case, uh, we could say that the acceptance will have effectively communicated on June 4th and not 16th June. But in the current scheme of things, due to the wrong address, the conclusion will be that acceptance was communicated on June 16 when it actually got to uh, Takra Day Limited, right? Uh, who disagrees with the analysis and application that we have done so far? I do not disagree, I agree with you. Okay, so let's uh, move on to the next one. For that tackle are this limited, uh, the number five. For that tackle are this uh, limited uh, letter posted on 12 June amounts to effective revocation of its offer. Now, so that is a standalone issue. So we need to state the principles. Who will state the law for us? As far as issue five is concerned. Yes, who will state the law for us, please? As far as issue five is concerned. Who will state the law for us? You don't like sharing, eh? Okay. Um, yes, the day. Hello. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, um, I know. Sorry. That uh, maybe we wrote at any time before. And I know that's an instance of the offer is made. Please, can you repeat yourself? My name I was okay. saying, I know that an offer may be revoked at any time before acceptance is made. Right. That's a general principle, okay? Then you, you, st you state the authority, what is it? What's the authority for that? Pain versus cave. Sorry? Pain and cave. Pain and cave, okay. Pain and cave, Woodledge and Grant and Stokinson and Doss, they're all good authorities, okay. However, there are exceptions to that, isn't it? Oh. You have to recite, okay. So you've, yeah, you've rightly stated that uh, an offer may be revoked 
or withdrawn any time before acceptance. Uh, pain and cave, Woodledge and Grant, Dickinson and Doss and all those, and that is fine. At common law, uh, where the offer has been expressed to remain valid for a stated period, then unless consideration has been provided, it can be withdrawn. Uh, but by virtue of Section 8 1 of Contract and Act 25, if in the absence of consideration, the promissor is still bound to keep the offer open for the stated period. Revocation of an offer is not valid unless it has been effect, has been communicated to the offeree. Now the offeror needs not communicate it himself and the offeree could become aware of it through any reliable uh, person, right? As in the case of uh, Dickinson and what, uh, and those and so on. So, you have finished setting the principle. Now let's do the application with respect to uh, issue five. So the talk of the letter uh, dated 12 June, can we treat it as an effective revocation of the offer? Meanwhile, on 12 June, talk of the limited posted the letter to ABC canceling the order which arrived on 15 June. Cancelling the order which arrived on 15 June. So, who, are, who will do the application for us? I mean, that's pretty straightforward. Who will do it for us? BJ, are you there? Okay, Jamie. Um. Okay, so having established that the postal rule has been defeated by Takaradi um, wrongly addressing the letter, yes. the effect of that then means that acceptance is going to be valid once it reaches the offeror. And that would be on the 15th when it arrived. 15th. And then we are saying that... Okay, 15th, 15th. yeah, sorry, yeah. 15th. Yes. And then we are saying that acceptance is valid if it is communicated before, um, sorry, revocation is valid if it is communicated before acceptance. Yeah. And in this case, um, Takadis letter got to ABC on the 12th, which is before the 15th. So then the revocation is valid. No, the, the, the letter, no, Takadis letter of revocation Got to location, yes, on, on 15th, not 12th. On 15th, yes, sorry, yeah. 15th. Yeah, and, and then uh, ABC letter got to them on 16th. So that's right. absolutely so. The revocation uh, was valid, okay, that's good. Now let's move on to the other issues and see. So, yeah, so six and seven, we say we do them together. Whether there's binding contract between ABC and uh, Takwadi Limited, and whether or not ABC is entitled to any remedy for Takwadi refusal to accept delivery. So we, we, we put them together and then we state the principles that for there to be a binding uh, contract, you must have an offer and acceptance, isn't it? Uh, not defeated by any of the known shifting factors and so on. And for what amounts to offer an acceptance, you are relying on the statement of the law uh, stated uh, already under the other issues. Now, where there's a binding offer and there has been, I mean, there's a binding agreement and one party does not uh, keep it side, that is a breach of contract. Uh, and for that matter, the innocent party may be entitled to damages. Uh, where uh, monetary compensation will suffice as a solution. On the other hand, where uh, monetary compensation will be inadequate, then equitable remedies such as specific performance or injunction may be granted and so on. So you just summarize briefly, then you just do the application. So is there a binding contract between ABC and TACRA? The base upon that we have done, who answered that for us?
based upon our analysis application so far of the, the previous uh, five issues, is there a binding contract between ABC and Takrade? Yeah, 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 sleeping. Okay. <laughs> Is there a binding contract or not? Um, from the analysis so far, I would go with the view that there's no contracts between ABC and Takradi. And yeah. also that Takrada's losses were more or less, for want of a better word, self-imposed. Because having received the revocation letter, they ignored it and then still went ahead to construct the rig. So whatever loss they have incurred over there is basically on their heads. So they're on the floor of their own, right? <laughs> Yeah, okay, so uh, that is fine, but uh, yeah, I mean, that is good. That is good. But what about, let's, let me vary it. Let's assume that uh, Takrade Limited saw the grid and they were happy, it's nice. And they decided to, uh, use it right they decided to use it but then when they were contacted for payment by uh, abc they said that they'll pay just the one million they won't pay the two million ghana cities uh what will be the position of the law Are you with me? Yeah, okay. Yeah, Fatima. Okay, so um, if that were the case, okay, then you have to think along the lines of, okay, first of all, yes, uh, despite the fact that uh, from the analysis you've done, Takrade had effectively revoked the offer, and yet, uh, ABC ignored it and went ahead and they have uh, constructed it. And Takradi to having revoked it, they've also come to affirm, right? Because they've accepted uh, or they've started using it. So even if we cannot apply the straight principles on breach of contract and so on and so forth, we can apply what we call the Kwaiza contract, what they call the restitutionary remedy, right? Uh, Quasar contra the principle against unjust enrichment. If Takwari Limited is going to take the benefit of the rig which has been constructed, then they cannot uh, take the benefit of it and refuse to pay anything. That's, uh, I mean, exploiting the fact that uh, ABC Limited, for example, did not uh, properly accept the original offer, I mean, Takrad Limited have made and so on. So, uh, unjust enrichment or Kwaiza, uh, or what some people say, Kwasi, a contract will be uh, relied upon by the court so as to determine uh, the proper payment which Takrad Limited should make to uh, ABC for the rig even if it's not going to be like the contractual price, right, as uh, it were. Yeah, so uh, you see how it's not difficult at all to get uh, some of these things uh, done. Yeah, so I will leave you now and uh, tomorrow at, uh, and tomorrow evening, we have uh, the Deputy Attorney General Mr. Tua Yabua, uh, who will come and speak to you about the, a number of things. So I will send you the Zoom link uh, nearer the time. So have a very good morning. I need to cut a small rest before I go and continue. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Doc. Thank you. <laughs>